So Liz, thanks for being here today. We talk a lot about uh, everything that's different between the Mad Men era and today's era of marketing. But can you talk to us a little bit about what is the same? Well, I mean, I think the, the primary goal is the same, right? We're trying to communicate the value of a product or a service to an audience. Um, and a lot of that really hasn't changed at all. It's, tri it's storytelling. Um, obviously, it's the media that have changed. At New York Life Insurance, our messaging hasn't changed at all. And what was that message? It's about uh, financial protection, um, protecting what matters most in your life, priorities. I think it's interesting because here you are, you're a woman in a very senior marketing role. Um, that probably wouldn't have happened in the Mad Men era. We saw very few examples of no, that. No, I think I'd have been Peggy maybe <laughs> if I were lucky. <laughs> exactly. When you look at ads from then and you look at ads from now, while the overarching message might be the same, I think the tone and the cultural references are pretty different. No question. It's, it was the husband was the good provider absolutely. and are you taking care of your wife? Um, and uh, everybody was white and now um, you know, there are so many single parent households and the women are at least the, the co-decision maker and frequently the lead decision maker in, in most households. When did that sh shift start to take place? I mean, really acknowledging it in our ads. In the 70s, we started to, we started to have very women-focused ads, mm -hmm. but again, those are as anachronistic now as the 60s ads are. It was very kind of Helen Reddy, I am woman, hear me war type ads. One of the things that, that was happening in the ad industry in the 60s was the emergence of this new um, medium, television. Mm -hmm. Remote control, color television, so beautiful, it enhances any decor. I know, it was, it was so exciting at the time. And you see, in Mad Men, they talk about, you know, creating TV ads and the magic of sight, sound, and motion. Well, today, we're going through sort of a similar shift with uh, digital and social media and these. Can you talk a little bit about, I guess, maybe the, uh, uh, you know, the analogy of what we're going through now versus back then? We're constrained by the ability to tell a story in 30 or 60 seconds. And now we have the internet where we can run long-form um, stories uh, and build on the stories to hopefully engaging people with our TV ads and then letting them get to know us better, follow up on the people that we're featuring. Sarah, every day spent with you has been a gift. I think some people might be surprised to hear how important TV still is to big national advertisers given all the choices today. Yeah. Why is that? You know, I ask myself that too because it's not the most efficient medium in the world and as I said it's really hard to find shows that really align with our brand and that many, many people would watch, but it is still probably the biggest unifying force in our culture. People don't gather around a laptop. To the extent that families still do gather, it is around a TV. I'm sure something else will emerge in the future, but right now that's, that's the best we got. Mm -hmm. 